defend yourself puts us all at danger. Organizations like the NRA, which are trying to increase deaths by gun in this country. Violence is always going to be part of it if guns are available. That made sense to me for years because it's logical to think that if more people own these, there'll be much more gun crime. Also, I live in New York City. There are a lot of people here. If just some of them carry guns, I assumed there'd be gunfire all the time. After all, if a couple gets into a fight or people get into a car accident, if they're armed, instead of just shouting at each other, they might shoot and kill each other. That's why it's a good thing that I now am not armed. Except... What if the mainstream media, as so often happens, is wrong? Or at least missing the point? What if more guns means less crime? What about the idea of concealed carry, that a person should be allowed to have a pistol on his person, concealed? I think it would be a wild, wild west. Oh, yeah? In New York City? Are you kidding me? There'd be a lot more aggression. There'd be a whole lot more shootings. So I believed that for years, despite having become a libertarian. It was just intuitive. If everyone around here has a gun, that would lead to much more gun crime. But then I read a book titled More Guns, Less Crime. It's an odd title. It was sort of a head spinner for me. How can more guns lead to less crime? So please welcome the author, John Lott. So how can more guns? We have fans here. We have a biased audience. I'm... It's nice to have that once in a while. But... Why less crime? Make your well, case. Just as you can deter criminals with higher arrest rates or higher conviction rates, the fact that a would-be victim might be able to defend themselves can also make it riskier for criminals to go and commit crime and deter some of them from doing it. My research finds that the police are probably the single most important factor for reducing crime, but I think the police themselves understand that they virtually always arrive on the crime scene after the crime's been committed. And that raises a question. What do you advise someone to do when they're having to confront a criminal by themselves? And simply telling people to behave passively actually turns out to be pretty bad advice. But people injure themselves accidentally with guns? They kill themselves with guns? They get angry and shoot someone in a heated moment? Right. Guns make it easier for bad things to happen. But they also make it easier for people to protect themselves and prevent bad things from happening. And the question is, what's the net effect? I can't find a place in the world where we've had a ban on guns and you haven't seen an increase in murders afterwards. Concealed carry terrifies a lot of people. And right. many people would be shocked to know how many states already allow it. And here is, I think, a very cool map that shows which states already have it. States that have concealed carry laws are colored yellow. This was the law in 1986. That's 25 years ago. Over the years, more and more states changed their laws to allow concealed carry. The mainstream media and my neighbors are so isolated here in New York City and Washington, D.C. Most of us have no clue that carrying a concealed weapon is already legal in most of the country. More places all the time, legal guns, yet crime does keep dropping. More guns, less crime. Dennis? When John says that the consensus of experts is that these uh, laws have led to the crime decrease, that is absolutely wrong. That is, and, and what he does is he conveniently excludes from his analysis all of the public health researchers that have weighed in on this. John, and time you and time again, they have said that John's data simply does not support his conclusions and that this is a very dangerous policy. Bad data. Some people have said that. Well, I. Academics at over 200 different universities have looked at the data that I've had given out. We've had dozens of academic studies been published in peer-reviewed journals that have looked at the research that I've done. All right, well, we have this chart from your book that shows violent crime rates after concealed carry laws passed. Here it is for murder. Um, it's impressive. It, after the law passed, crime went down. Well, we hear about the murders and robberies. We don't often hear about the murders or robberies that are stopped because someone has a gun. Sometimes people just show a gun and the robber runs away. Mark Walters says he pulled a gun and a robber ran. 
Nikki Gozer says because she could not pull a gun, her husband was killed. Susanna Hupp says her parents were killed because of gun restrictions. So, Susanna, let me start with you. You and your parents went to a restaurant. What, what happened? Well, at that time in the state of Texas, we weren't allowed to carry, and so uh, many of us had our guns out in our car. Um, a madman drove his truck through the window and very methodically began executing people. He had complete control over the situation. And uh, the short version is that he killed 23 people, including my parents. And um, I was very angry because I didn't have the opportunity to at least change the odds. And had you had your gun, you would have stopped him. You know, you can argue that back and forth. As your other guest said, you can what if it to death. But the one thing I don't think anybody can argue with is that it would have changed the odds. Not one of these mass shootings has occurred in a place where guns were was allowed. I mean, stop and think of that. I, I can't think of a single place where a mass shooting has occurred where guns were allowed. These people look for fish in a barrel. They look for easy targets and high body bag counts. And at this restaurant, you weren't the only person who left her gun in the car. Yes, sir. Uh, there was, there, actually, there were a number of people. Uh, my manager friend, uh, a young woman that was killed, her gun was out in her car, um, a man whose wife was killed. My parents had just had their 47th wedding anniversary, and when we had an opportunity to get out, um, my mom chose to stay with her mortally wounded husband, and so she was killed also. And, Susanna, you wrote a book about this. Yes, sir. I wrote a book about uh, the detail of the event, and it also... <laughs> quite frankly, is intended to convert people who are maybe a little squishy about guns. Because I'm not a hunter. I'm not into blasting Bambi. Um, but <laughs> Blasting Bambi. Your book title refers to the legislature. What happened? We actually changed the law in Texas immediately before I got in. And, um, and we've made several improvements since then. Nikki, what happened in your case? My husband, uh, Benjamin Goser, was murdered right in front of me by a man who had been stalking me. I'm a right to carry permit holder in Tennessee. You had I, a gun for your safety? Yes, but because of Tennessee state law at the time, I had to leave my loaded, permitted, legal weapon locked in my vehicle that night. The Tennessee law said you can't take it any place that serves alcohol. That is correct, but the man that murdered my husband brought one in, and he did not have a handgun carry permit. Criminals don't care about the law. And had you had your gun, you think you would have been in a position to stop him? I believe so, and like Susanna said, you know, at least we would have had a fighting chance at Ben's survival instead of just being pure victims. And you talk about the gun being the great equalizer. Yes. If you really think about that, you know, a bad guy doesn't even have to have a weapon. You know, I'm a little lady. All it would take is a 250-pound man with his bare hands to overtake me. Yes, it is an equalizer. I mean, you think of men carrying guns, but you think it's more important for women. Absolutely, and especially a woman that may have a stalker. Mark, uh, what happened to you? In uh, 2002, my daughter was two weeks old. I was on my way to work, and I found myself the intended victim of a apparent carjacking attempt at about 6.30 in the morning. I had a lawfully carried Glock sidearm. I unlatched my seatbelt, drew my weapon, and stopped the attack or the impending attack against me. Just by showing the gun? Just by showing the gun. Just by showing the gun. And yes, we sir. don't know how often that happens because that doesn't get reported. No, we do, actually. Uh, there are estimates. The there Department estimates. of Justice is at about 800,000 is the lowest I've seen. The uh, Gary Kleck has done studies that show approximately two point, up to 2.5 million times. So I became one of those statistics. The founders had just fought the American Revolution. They'd seen friends and family members die in the struggle to be free from tyranny. They wanted to make sure that people could defend themselves against an oppressive government. One of those founders, George Mason, observed to disarm the people was the best and most effective way to enslave them. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we ought to take up arms against our government, but I'm saying the founders were on to something that is captured by this bumper sticker. Politicians prefer unarmed peasants.